Hey, hello guys. It's really great to be here. Thank you for the invitation and thank you organizers for putting together such a nice, such a nice event. So what I would like to talk with you about is uh, why games fail. Uh, it will be talk about the free to play games uh, and uh, my experience is mainly mainly from the mobile games. But uh, before we go into the talk, a bit of introduction of who am I and about the super scale that I'm working for. So my name is uh, Michal Minarik. I'm leading the monetization and game design team at uh, Superscale, and I'm uh, enthusiast uh, regarding the growth and seeing things improve and earn more and creating profitable, profitable products. Regarding my gaming experience, I analyzed more than 100 games. Uh, I helped grow and improved more than 20 games. Uh, all of that together, uh, I was able to create more than 20 million uh, in newly created uh, value. And also I am building a team and uh, helping others, uh, others grow. Regarding my non-gaming experience, previously I'm a product. I am coming from product management background. Uh, I was responsible for the fixed internet in uh, Slovak Telecom, which was roughly around 50 million in really yearly revenue. And later I moved to a uh, moved to Sajik, where I was responsible for the monetization of the GPS navigation application with around 12. Uh, 12 million yearly revenue. Uh, at that time, I found my my passion with uh, with apps and with uh, scaling applications, and I was looking up to the games. So I was uh, really lucky and happy when I joined uh, Superscale. I was one of the people uh, that helped create uh, Bat Legion. It's a multi-million uh, dollar mobile game. I was responsible for the big part of the economy for the monetization for some uh, uh, meta game for parts of the meta game and some of the systems uh, in the game and it was it was amazing experience uh, to work on a game that later uh, earned almost a million in one of month and uh, the game is still live today so please uh, if this is interesting for you go check it out it's about uh, you organize an army uh, you are trying to find a synergies and then you deploy the army and they fight uh, with the uh, with enemies i also uh, started a startup founded the startup with uh, with a few friends it was a while ago uh, but the acceptor uh, it is still uh, still active today it's no no multi-million company nothing like that but the company is still active today which i consider a success since you know, majority of the companies companies fail. The company is uh, solving a problem of the digital signature uh, on the go. And also, I have a, have a family currently, uh, three kids with uh, my wife. So this is how I spend my time outside of the outside of uh, the games and outside of the work. And now something about the super scale. Uh, so. Uh, I, if you are from Slovakia, I'm sure you have heard about Superscale. Uh, we are uh, one of the fastest growing uh, companies in Central Europe, and also we have been awarded mul multiple uh, multiple awards. We are building a growth uh, platform that enables uh, game companies uh, to unlock uh, and grow, unlock potential and grow their games. Some of the names that we are working with is uh, Lego, uh, Electronic Arts, EA, uh, and also multiple other smaller, uh, smaller studios. It's really we are working with throughout multiple genres and with different uh, size of the companies. So we uh, we have more than sixty experts across uh, all of the uh, business uh, verticals. Uh, have worked with all the major free to play. Uh, generous of mobile, and we have a proven uh, track record with more than 150 titles launched. Uh, and we are building the platform, uh, as I told, uh, helping optimize uh, optimize the game performance, increase LTV, uh, automate UA, and so on. 
Uh, this is how we imagine our uh, value that we are bringing. So if you are working with a game uh, within the within the gaming business, you know how complicated it is to it is to create a successful, profitable, profitable business. Uh, uh, the treasure chest. Uh, so you just start. There are some uh, blockers. There are some mines throughout the road. There are uh, there are enemies uh, trying to kick you out. Uh, there are holes in the way. And we have done this with uh, dozens of the games. Help them with the uh, technology. Help them with uh, scaling the LTV. With uh, game design. With uh, economy design. With monetization like special offers, uh, personalization, monetization systems, ad monetization, for example. So we have done many, uh, many of these uh, before on multiple games. So that's why uh, we believe that the road with us is, is much more smooth. Uh, and simple. And now to the actual talk. So the question is, if uh, the games fail, uh, all of what I will be speaking about is from uh, my experience uh, at the team that I'm working with of deconstructing hundreds of top grossing games on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, not as successful games. Uh, success successful games. The goal of this talk, which I hope you will come out uh, when you will go out of this talk, that you will be able to increase the revenue on your existing games and on your newly created games, you will have higher chances of success with your following uh, following projects. So uh, globally, the players are growing significantly. Uh, in a few years, half of the planet will play games. Uh, at the same time, the revenue is growing significantly. So throughout the past two years, the revenue more than doubled. And on the mobile, uh, the rise was much, much stronger. So if you are working with uh, mobile games, it's, in my opinion, it's a play, great place to be. Uh, currently, because this trend that you can see that the mobile is wor uh, is growing 26, 27, almost 27% uh, per year, it's uh, uh, the forecast is that this will not slow down so fast. So if you have a successful product today, there's a high chance that you are able to grow uh, the product only with being on the, on the growing market. And it, since the player base is growing, your product uh, should grow also. So, do free-to-play games fail? If everything is growing, is it is it true that free-to-play games fail? As an example, let's have a look at iOS puzzle category. There are more than 3 uh, billion yearly revenue in just iOS puzzle category. And uh, 15,000 games uh, are uh, accounting for this. If you do the math, it's on average, two hundred thousand uh, euros uh, euros per uh, per year per game, which sounds like it should be fairly easy to create a product that is that is profitable. But this is not the case, and now we'll have a look at why. Usually, uh, the typical case is that a company comes to us and says, "Hey, we've got a product, uh, but we are not able to spend profitable." Uh, to do a profitable campaigns on that we are not able we need to grow in ltv and we do not know how to do that or the kpis that we are seeing like retention or uh, monetization is not as we would expect pretty often these products are not uh not profitable and this is just a spe uh, specific example there was a company that came to us uh with this this chart and they showed us look we we are top 20 20 percent within the revenue per daily active user but the game is not earning enough money how is it how is it so and this explains pretty well the how the market is set up so if we drill down on the ios puzzle category the top application is uh, is earning to 32 million uh, in monthly revenue it's Candy Crush Saga, obviously. Uh, the top 1% uh, uh, game is earning $500,000 uh, per month. The top 1%, it means that it's like uh, 150th uh, game 
from the from the top ordered by the top uh, top crossing if we move a bit down top uh, the game which is in the top 5 is earning $20,000 and this actually is 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 the is the line where i believe uh, the games are started to be profitable so if you need some uh, game designer some uh, developers art guy you've got a team of four six seven people so this is the minimum revenue that the that the game needs to generate so the team and the, the game can be can be profitable so going a bit deeper top 10 percent game is earning ten thousand dollars and top 20 percent is earning four thousand dollars so actually they perceived uh, on one scale that they are in the top 20 percent they should be earning a sizable amount of money but actually, this is the reality that they were earning not enough of, enough money. And uh, actually, uh, fun fact is that this number was really corresponding with what they were uh, earning actually. And just for a reference to the average of twenty thousand uh, yearly, I, I'm sorry, two hundred thousand yearly revenue, revenue on average in this category, uh, the the game that is in the middle. Of the range is earning just four hundred dollars, which is no way uh, that this is profitable. So, being top top twenty percent means that the game is not profitable. But on the other hand, if you are able to double the average revenue per daily active users, you will see multiple fold increase in revenue. So it, I know that it's much harder to to increase when you are. Uh, at the top, so each additional increase, each, it's much harder and much harder compared to the previous one. But if you are able to deliver uh, the uplift, uh, the revenue that you will receive it multiple times uh, times of that. And later in the presentation, we will go through why is it so, uh, because it's connected with uh, with the innovation and uh, and competition. So just to finish uh, finish up with uh, with the uh, the revenue and explaining how the market looks the top one application which is uh, candy crush saga is taking 13 percent of the revenue it's taking 13 percent of the market share uh, of the revenue top three applications have 31 percent and top 20 applications are taking 70 percent of the revenue which means that those uh, 15,000 applications are splitting just 30% of the revenue and only 20 applications uh, uh, are responsible for 70% of all uh, all revenue. So we this means that we are in the winner takes it all market, which means you have to aim to the absolute top to be successful. Uh, the top 5%, it's roughly the 20,000 Twenty thousand per month revenue, which should be profitable, should be profitable product. Uh, this is was just for the iOS puzzle category, but we similar numbers across all of the all of the genres. Okay, now uh, to why games fail. It's when you are building a product, you need to focus on everything. You need to pro to check to do the player's research, you need to do the product market fit, then you go with the core loop, meta game, you have to do the innovation, you are uh, working on game design, uh, monetization, you are working with, uh, so the game needs to look good, so with graphics, with effects, uh, you need to have enough of content, and for sure you have to be data driven, you need to track data, do dashboards, analyze it, and so on, and many, many other things. But the question is how are how can you uh, focus on everything, and at the same time, not all are created equal. So some of these areas are uh, contributing more to the to the success of the games, and some are attributing less. So the question is which of these are important? Which of these should be really should you be really focusing on? The answer is. Uh, you have to decide based on the impact on the revenue. What does it mean? You would, you would tell that each of these things will impact the revenue. Like if you do not do the product market fit correctly, it will impact uh, the revenue. Or if you do not do the game design or graphics or live ops, all of that is impacting the revenue. 
but the the size uh, in which they impact the revenue is different for each of the areas. So let's take uh, an example. I picked the uh, graphics and the core gameplay. So uh, can a game work without graphics? No, it cannot. Like if you have no graphics, there is no game. Like how can the can the players play play it? For sure, we remember this. Uh, these browser games with just text and stuff like that, but this is not not mass market we are uh, speaking now about. So graphics is something that you must have in the game to function properly. But on the other hand, we have seen games which were ugly and were earning money, and uh, at the same time we have seen games which are beautiful but have not seen uh, the revenue according to the investment of the graphics. So I perceive graphics as something that should be, uh, you have to have the graphics in the game. It should be nice, it should be appealing, but the graphics, it's not the, not the thing that will uh, ensure success of your product. Let's speak now about the core gameplay. So the core gameplay is something that is, uh, that is essential in my opinion in the, in the monetization and in deciding the, the, uh, the success. It can be really vague in terms of, if you take an uh, idle game, it's just, in my opinion, it's just clicking and trying to optimize, uh, optimize some meshing and buying upgrades based on which are the, the, the cheapest one, which looks like, a, like a, a bit of mess, but this is something that uh, the, the progress behind the core gameplay, that's something that players uh, players love, and that's why this is impacting the, the revenue more than if you have a beautiful or not uh, not graphic, not a nice graphic. So this was the example of how to use the key, how we are thinking about uh, applying these keys, and uh, which areas are we focusing on, and which areas are not as important. So based on the hundreds of the games that we have analyzed and deconstructed, uh, there are five uh, the most important things that uh, we see, which have a drastic impact on the success uh, of the project. It's lack of innovation, it's retention, monetization design, uh, amount of content and pacing, and uh, spending depth. Now we will go through each of them, uh, to learn more, more about that. So number one is lack of innovation. Steve Jobs said that innovation is the only way uh, to win. It does not mean that you need to build something completely new that nobody has ever seen before. Like Elon Musk is, uh, is building a, such a big rocket never seen before. He wants it to be fully reusable have not seen that before. Uh, so I do not have this in mind. It's crazy amount of innovation and the, the fail uh, probability is, uh, is extremely high. You should build your innovation on, on evolvement. So there are successful games out there. Maybe you have a successful game and you need to, to build uh, an innovation on top of verified, uh, verified things. If you would analyze top grossing games, uh, top grossing charts, you would find out that usually they are not any crazy complicated and they are building on one of the, one of the things. So the most important thing for the innovation is the CPI and the LTV. So cost per install, if you can lower the cost per install, it means that you are more profitable and at the same time, it the same means for the LTV. So if your revenue per player is higher than your competition, you are uh, winning the market. Now I have prepared a few examples on how uh, successful games are working with the, with the innovation. So for example, uh, Raid Shadow Legends are famous for their, uh, for their high quality CGI narrative driven uh, advertisements. This allows them, uh, th the people that are viewing the ads connect with the ad, and therefore it has a higher, uh, higher engagements 
and this boosts the, boosts the virality of the ads. And therefore, they are able to, to decrease the cost per install by 30%. That means uh, the Raid Shadow Legends isn't the only RPG, even not the only successful RPG game out there, but this is one of the things that they, uh, they did well, uh, how to beat uh, the competition. Hero Wars, yeah, actually, that's a good example for another RPG game. Uh, they are using uh, different uh, targeting. So they are presenting the game with a fake ads as uh, as puzzle game. So they are fishing in a different, uh, different pond, and therefore the CPI is, again, uh, decreased compared to the compared to the competition. If your CPI is lower, you are able to spend, uh, you are, your campaigns are more profitable and therefore you are able to spend more on the marketing and uh, this is how to be the competition. So this is one side of the, of, the, of the slide. And on the second slide, on the second side, we have the LTV. So lifetime value of the player. Uh, and here as an example, I picked uh, Tennis Clash. So it's, it's, a, it's a game that is roughly year and a half uh, released. And it's, it was not the first tennis game out there. Uh, but what they did well was that they connected working metagame with uh, a good core gameplay. So they, they, they picked uh, uh, a tennis, like a sports sports theme and the meta game and the progression systems that you see in the game if you would play it it's really classic uh classic gacha with a with a character so and this allowed them to increase the ltv compared to the, to the competition within the within the tennis tennis uh, tennis games next i uh, i picked the archero i hope everybody of you uh, have played it so again, this this was not not the first game uh, roguelike or roguelite uh, game, even on the on the mobile phone. What they did well was uh, they connect. They really did well the the easy. It's easy to pick up. So how you play with the character and how you need to play with the strategy. And they added a slot mechanic on top of that when you are upgrading and winning those uh, those power ups. This is what is attra attractive for the, for the for the players. And uh, actually, in many of these innovations, it's it's uh, more of an evolution. It's not like building something from the ground up. Many of the successful games are just picked from picked from a PC market or a console market and being marketed on the on the mobile side. For example, recently there was a game released uh, from the uh, BeatStar uh, and uh, we all all of us have played the Guitar Hero and this is a great adaptation of the Guitar Hero for the mobile uh, mobile phones and it's gaining traction and collecting millions uh, millions in revenue so the last one uh, is the project makeover so again it's a match three game uh, the match three is the same everywhere in my opinion but what is interesting for the players is the meta game so they are really connected it with deep narrative game where you are able to personalize uh, skins and things that you uh, work on outside outside of the core, core uh, match three uh, match three meta game, and players are able to connect with the with the story with the story of helping people, and that's why the LTV is much higher compared to the others. So innovate. However, if you believe you have something special, don't believe yourself. Uh, ask others. Uh, directly start attracting uh, buying players. And you will see, check the retention, ask for the feedback to know if this is really something special or it's just with your eyes you see that's something special. And please do not ask your family, friends, and uh, and, and fools because they are not uh, not telling you the truth. Second point is the retention. 
So usually when starting a new project, everybody's focusing on the early retention. So day one, day three, maybe day, day, uh, day seven, which of these two games, red and blue one, do you believe will be successful? Usually the answer is the blue one because the early retention is, is higher, but this is not the full picture. What should we focus on is the, is the long-term retention because this is what will eventually decide on the success of the project. The red one, the red game, is collecting, is transforming the players into a regu regular one, so they will stay with the game and they will play it for, for months to come. There is no reason why they shouldn't. On the other hand, on, in the blue game, uh, they are gradually uh, leaving the game and it's hard to attract them back. Actually, if you compare the revenue with daily installs and you see high correlation between the, the revenue and daily installs, uh, that's a sign of a game that is monetizing uh, the early game. If, you, if there is a really low co correlation, this is a sign of a good game with a really strong uh, long tail. The red game, if you actually switch off uh, the UA campaigns and stop all of the organic traffic, uh, the game will will live and will have the same revenue. You will not see any change in the revenue because of the existing uh, existing game. So this is where we uh, should focus on, and because the players are staying for longer, uh, the the revenue is higher. I know that it's it's really hard to work with the long term retention like this because if you check if you made a change and you need to wait half a year to understand if the, the change was good or, or bad, this is not actionable. So we need to have in mind the long-term retention, but uh, it's, I understand it's hard to work, uh, work with that. Next, we have the monetization design. So the core of the monetization is progress. So the players desire, uh, desire for progress, and this is by far the safest way that you can go. What is the progress? You need to, to know for your game, but generally it's something how the player move forward. So having more content, upgrading things, upgrading stops, improving things. For example, improving power. So the player is gaining power, he's gaining time or energy, he's gaining currencies, uh, and he's gaining uh, new content. On the other hand, player is investing something. He's investing his money. Uh, he can be investing his time in form of ad, uh, ad views, and he can even be investing his, uh, his privacy, his opinion in surveys, uh, his data that you can uh, collect and you can monetize. Now a short case study. Uh, we worked with a game uh, that had 50-50 revenue between the skins and the progressions, and they were like their strategy was to focus on the skins. They perceived it that they are good with the skin. The big chunk of revenue is coming from the skins. But when we reviewed the game, we saw that they they are missing the progression revenue. So their progression was set up in a way that it was not really attractive for the player to 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 spend uh, spend money there. So therefore, we discussed with them and we changed the strategy to progress to focus on the progression. And when we changed the economy, we changed the the progression systems, we changed uh, many things around that. We are able to achieve 10 times the revenue rise with proper monetization. And suddenly, the, the, the good split that they had 50 50 was not because they were strong on the skins, but it was because they were poor with the uh, with, uh, progression revenue. So, this is, this is true for, for majority of the games. I know there are free to play uh, successful titles with only skins. Uh, skin uh, monetization, but generally it's far more safe for you to design a standard free-to-play progression monetization compared to trying uh, to be successful within the skins. Usually it's connected with the amount of the players that, uh, that these games have. Next up, uh, we've got the content and pacing. So do you know how long does it take to come to an end game in top grossing games, like I picked Clash Royale and Puzzle and Empires, and it takes years 
you are able to calculate this and it clash royale it's more than seven years until you come to an end game and collect everything which is which is in the game the years of gameplay uh it's the game length so if you combine the amount of content and the pacing how often do you give out the content to players uh, this is the game length so for example this is a clash royale uh, how they are distributing the content so on the uh, x axis uh, we have 1000 days which is roughly three years uh, and this is how the curve looks like so in the beginning it's much faster so you are able to build decks and play with the with the meta game and then it a bit slows down but always there is something more something that is attractive for the player to to collect to gain uh, and to progress on the other hand we are working with a with a with a game that their content unlocking looked like this so in the beginning they distributed all of the content and there was nothing more in the game so eventually we explained discussed and agreed on a plan that we significantly increased the amount of the of the content in the game and at the same time we worked with the with the distribution and as a result we saw uh, multiplication in ltv the the core problem of, of 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 this game was that if you collect everything there is no reason why you should continue playing the game because you've got everything why should you uh, should you, uh, should you play more monitor uh, where the players are and add more content if needed if you got a sizable chunk of players at the end game having everything you need to uh, to add more uh, more content the spending depth is the the last one uh, so what is spending depth it's amount of money which you need which the player needs to spend in the game to progress to the end game so we spoke about the progression and how to get there the progression can be sped up with uh with money so this is uh this is the progression again coming to the to the examples of clash royale and empires and puzzles can you guess what is the spending depth of top crossing games it said that i cannot hear you but uh i hope i hope uh some of you know the answers and it's again in uh it looks like crazy amounts for example in the empires and puzzle is more than four hundred thousand uh, dollars and in clash royale uh it's it's around fifteen thousand dollars but you need to understand that this is let, imagine a player you you've got an interesting battle pass in the game that costs twenty dollars and the the and the player is buying it every every month so he ends up spending two thousand and uh, 200 and uh, five uh, i'm sorry 250 dollars per year and if he's playing for multiple years it's easy for them for for the player to spend few hundred or maybe uh north of thousand dollars throughout his uh his lifetime so this is one of the examples why it should be uh it should be high enough at the same time there are multiple benefits connected to them uh, to that the game can Played be uh, can be played for years. We have spoken about the content that needs to support uh, the years of gameplay. The game can be really generous. You are able to give out free rewards and bonuses, and the game will not break for the, the top spenders. So if somebody comes and wants to spend few thousands in one day, the game will not break. He will progress faster, uh, but he will still have a reason to play and continue with the game. And uh, also, you are able to provide discounts and special offers for the players, and it will not hurt your uh, your long-term monetization efforts. Again, an example from from uh, our experience. Uh, so this is a game with uh, multiple million uh, in revenue, and this is example of the distribution of the players. So we have non-players down at the bottom, which account for ninety-eight percent. And we have uh, the payers distributed uh, based on amount they spent throughout their lifetime in the game uh, uh, on the top. The more they spend, uh, the higher they are. So 2% conversion rate on the payments, that's something we see as a standard throughout the games that we are working on. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, if, you if you would count these two categories together, it's more than... Uh, 
60%. 65% of the revenue is coming from 0.2 players. So actually, this is the reality of the free-to-play. You are creating, uh, you are living and creating uh, the game for the for the top spenders that allow you to create a game and allow other not payers and maybe small payers to play uh, to play the game. So let's go to the summary. Uh, you need to aim for the top. We are in the winner takes it all market, which means you need to be on the you need to aim for the top top uh, top ranks uh, for your product to be profitable and successful. Not all things are created equal. Focus more on the things that are impacting uh, revenue. Innovation is a great way to get to the top grossing ranks, built on top of existing su successful games, either that you may have or you see uh, you see out there. You need to have at least one thing that you are able to do better than your competition, because why would somebody switch game if there is nothing new? Uh, retention, long-term retention is what is important and not the short one. Yes, the short one is showing some signs and will help you decide, but what will decide the overall success is the long-term retention. Then the monetization uh, design, the progress is the by far the most successful way how to monetize the game. Content and pacing, the game needs to last for years and the spending depth, you need to aim above 10,000 uh, dollars per uh, lifetime of the game. And actually some of the hyper casuals are going above 1,000, which is, which is uh, really interesting. Now coming back to the goal, I hope that the goal was achieved, that you will be able to uh, to increase uh, the revenue from your existing games. And as you will create new projects and new games, you will have higher chances of success with, this, uh, with these projects. There are uh, some recommended readings. They recommend, feel free to post, uh, to, to uh, Google these things out. Maybe we can somehow share it with you. Uh, it's, articles and videos that were the most uh, impacting on, on understanding the gaming, the gaming business for me. So that is uh, from my side, and I hope that we will have a good discussion on the Discord and that we will uh, answer, answer a question. Thank you for, for attending. Let's hop on to the discussion.